Good morning everybody and welcome to the stream and uh, if you are new here I'm very glad that you made the effort to come around for all the old guys welcome guys business as usual we're going to do some circuits um, we will then end off with a flight from uh, Porto down to Lisbon with uh, Christian that's on uh, channel with us here um, any of you guys who want to join us on Vatsim uh, afterwards you are more than welcome uh, I'm not going to do the initial training bits and circuit on Vatsim just not to annoy anybody so uh, um, I've tried to use the map to just position the aircraft somewhere reasonable and uh, you guys are more than welcome to chip in uh, leave your comments make comments uh, suggestions and all the other stories and ask your questions um, but the whole purpose of today is going to be training uh, before we start I want to give you guys a little bit of background so I've been flying the NGX for a long long time I um, obviously grew up as many of you guys with FSX P3D uh, PMDG stuff um, and then obviously Zebo came my way uh, just about probably two years maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less ago so I, I got involved with this aircraft and I fell in love with it very early on and as always I've just been using ILS and normal LNAV um, VNAV kind of approaches I, I didn't really delve into the more advanced stuff and then all of a sudden the MMR came around this little uh, Magody McAfter over here came around and uh, that obviously opened up the GLS uh, EGNOS and WAS capabilities of the Zebo. but there was one kind of approach that I never bothered with and that was the Ian approaches anything and everything to do with Ian I just never bothered I just probably because I didn't know any better so what happened was one of the uh, Zebo uh, pilot group members uh, Santos actually made a comment on the Facebook page and it piqued my interest it got me going so Santos if you watch this um, video thank you for it I need to say thank you because it really it piqued my interest it got me thinking it got me wondering um, if we've got the capabilities why am I not using it and then I realized with shock that um, I don't know how to use it and I then approached Twixter and we had a very long conversation and he explained a lot of things I then spoke to uh, some of my real world uh, pilot uh, friends as well they gave me a lot of input it, it just blew my mind away what this Ian was all about eventually I started doing tests I started flying circuits trying to get this thing to work and I just couldn't I couldn't I went back to some of the guys and I said to them I, I don't understand this I, is this a bug what's happening I just don't understand it and so to make a long story short I eventually gave up I just said no there's, there's definitely something wrong we're gonna have to wait it out I don't know maybe Zebo needs to fix something and all and I, I then got the blood spark idea why don't I just ask him and I did I went to him and I said Zebo tell me what am I doing wrong so he gave me the short version of how you do it and I went back and I did it and I said no I won't do it so I said to him hang on I'm gonna put up a stream please watch the stream that then tell me what happened and he did and it was so amazing he came back and he he pointed out one little mistake I made and the moment I realized what the mistake was and I fixed the mistake and this whole Ian thing just came together um, the penny dropped so to speak um, it's opened so much new possibilities a whole new world for me and uh, me and Uncle John started talking and he said you know what I bet there's a lot of guys out there that would appreciate a training session about it and this is where we're at today so I'm hoping that I can contribute to your lives make it a little bit easier and that I can open some possibilities for you so I'm going to show you the mistake I made um, I don't mind um, it, taking one for the team there uh, I, I think it's uh, as always if you guys look through my videos I try and keep it real I'm not here to pretend I'm not a showman I'm here for education um, and if I embarrass myself we just all laugh about it and we continue but I bet somebody's going to learn something today so I'm not sure uh, 
if any of the team members are going to watch this video or the stream live or whether they will review it later but we'll get into that it's or we can skip it it's not it's not important what's important is that you guys are here and that you have the need to learn something and i'm going to do my best to give you some information so uncle john christian you guys ready we're ready yes all right cool if anybody else would like to join us on discord the link is in the notes below the video there's only one requirement you need to have push to talk going and obviously uh, you need to go through the security measures in discord to get here but once you've done that you, you're more than welcome to join us for the new viewers please also take note in the notes below my streams and my videos is a couple of links one of them is called my private hanger it takes you to my onedrive my onedrive is where i basically put all the stuff that i can share publicly about the zebo it contains a wealth of information it also contains uh, the the stuff that i'm going to deal with today um, let me quickly show you I uh, just want to change this display capture. While Nico is looking for that, there is a tips. That's it, Uncle John. This is what I want to, to give. Download. Yeah, this is what I want to show. All right, so if you follow the link, this uh, private Dango OneDrive link of mine, and you go to the Explain 11 folder, you will find a Zebo folder in there. In the Zebo folder, you will find the approach configuration tips. All right, you're welcome to download it. This basically is a summary of what I have learned and some of the stuff that we are going to talk about today. Um, I'll show you wh what the mistake was that I made, a silly, silly little mistake, and um, then you guys don't have to do the same. And obviously you can print this out and keep it handy. But there's a whole wealth of information, a whole bunch of stuff um, available in, in that OneDrive that's going to change a lot of your zebo stuff and knowledge so please feel free to go download take what you need use it don't use it that kind of stuff okay all right so um let's start at one point let's quickly look at the chats here bitrip good morning uh we've said good morning to uncle john crescendo good morning Bomet, good morning uh paul yoki uh, guys, welcome on board. Uh, please uh, feel free to ask your questions. Paul, I'm going to drag you into Discord just now. There you go. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. All right. Um, glad to have you here. Morning, Paul. All right. So let's start at a point of order somewhere. Ah, uh, Yorkie, yeah. Yeah, I know the list is there. I try and make it simple. I try and make it easy. I, I firmly believe in the the old saying of kiss, keep it simple, stupid. I don't like an overload of fanciness. It needs to be simple for me to understand it. Otherwise, it just goes over my, my head, yeah. Um, all right, so if you look at the video notes below the video right now, you will see the flight plan. Um, it's basically a copy of this string over there so if you guys have got navigraph you're welcome to copy and paste it put it in in your route and then you will obviously have what we have on screen here as well so let's talk about ian um, in the show notes you will see that i've also put the description it stands for integrated approach navigation i've given you a, a website link where you can go read more about it and basically what ian does is it will take in our case this morning vor dme and also the rnav um, approaches and it's going to turn it into an ils type of approach making it much more precise all right so uh, give me one second please Right, I'm back. Um, so if you if you um, consider the information, what Ian does is it takes a whole lot of different approaches that a pilot would have had to learn, and it's changed them into one single 
form of approach. So it cuts down on training, it cuts down on training costs. Um, the uh, FMC basically takes care of everything and you're going to end up doing basically an ILS approach but using VOR, DME, RNAV, etc, etc. And um, according to the document there that I have shared with you guys, it actually simplifies the approach for 18, 18, 18 different approaches. So you can imagine going back a few years, becoming a pilot, learning all these different approaches. Now you're talking GPS, VOR, localizer, uh, the back or stuff. Um, all these things are now simplified into Ian, basically. And, and this is what we're going to show you guys today. Okay, so we are situated at uh, Porto Airport. Just want to tie the aircraft to the map there. Uh, we are about ready to go onto the runway and we will do the setups um, as usual. I want you guys to understand even though we're going to fly circuits it is going to be just another flight so we're going to do all the same preparations and then we'll talk about the approach as we get there. So don't be shy to just go and practice the same thing. Um, I think circuits as a training method is a very good um, builder of experience and confidence in any way i mean we we me and alex and a couple of the other guys what we do is we we simply get into the zebra and we hand fly circuits with this thing many 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 times i mean it's good for practice so this is now just going to use the uh, autopilot but doing circuits so you guys can practice it makes it easier than to fly from point a to point b and you waste an hour in between doing absolutely nothing um this flight also because it's just a circuit is going to be high paced. I'm not going to bother with lights off above 10,000 and all the funny stuff. I'm going to concentrate on doing the job at hand and relaying the information to you. So please don't feel alarmed or leave notes. Hey, you forgot the lights on above 10,000. We're only going to climb to 11,000 foot because the um, altitude restriction on the star is 11,000 foot. So we need to be at or above um, to actually join. Um, one of the things that Zebo has changed in the Zebo that we have not had in any other version of the 800 simulation in any other simulator um, is the the enforcement of the restrictions so you guys need to also understand that um, if you don't get top of descent and all kinds of other funny stuff it's usually related nowadays to the the FMC actually being more realistic and enforcing those kind of um, restrictions so yes we're going to climb to 11,000 and literally just fly around the circle that you guys can see over there. Don't forget the um, one mistake that you said that you were going to make. Oh, now I will, I will do that when we get there. I will do that when we get there. And I'll, I'll put that other um, list on screen again just to, um, you know, point it out properly. And so guys can take note about that as well. Okay. Good, so the first the first circuit we're going to do is we're going to actually do the VOR DME approach. Sorry, the kids were shouting at each other behind the scenes here. Yeah. I'll just mute, mute myself when, when necessary. Um, Right, so in terms of the VOR DME approach, this is the Navigraph chart for it. There's a couple of things that we need to take into account before we go. Number one is when you do an EN approach on a VOR DME, uh, that frequency 114.1 for the VOR is not a requirement to put into the MMR. Usually when we do an ILS flight, you will put the ILS frequency into the MMR. In this instance, you may put it in, nothing's gonna stop you from doing it, but it's more for cosmetic or for visual reference purposes. It has got absolutely nothing uh, to do and will have no influence on the Ian approach that we are going to do. So I think that's the very first thing that you guys need to understand. If we uh, go back and we look at our list, uh, you will see there we are going to use the approach button. Uh, the glide slope will be off 
and uh, then if we look a little bit lower we say here that the VORDM in RNAV um, is the approach types do not require any input in the MMR um, it's not a requirement it's a nice to have or a cosmetic reference a visual reference whatever you want to call it it's not going to influence the approach because it's a run off the FMC all right, and the only prerequisite is we must not have an ILS frequency active in the MMR. So that is the nice to have. Our uh, final approach course, it also is not going to make a difference. It runs off the FMC. Again, um, if you've flown this aircraft long enough, uh, it's muscle memory. I mean, I will always reach for the MCP and I will always tune uh, my final approach course both sides. That's just who I am. It's not going to change anything. But I would highly recommend just for other procedures not to lose the muscle memory. Don't go off on a tangent now and say, ah, it's not necessary. Because tomorrow you fly an ILS and then it's not going to work for you. And then you think, well, wait, what did I do wrong? So always bear that in mind. All right. What is important for us to note also is that we're going to descend. Our decision altitude is 1,700 foot uh, MSL above sea level. Um and then uh, we also have an MDA uh, situation. We're not going to use the circle to land really, so I'm, I'm not worried about that. But our, our actual, sorry, let me rephrase that. The, the minimum altitude or the interception height where the Ian will kick in for us, where we're going to use the approach button is 1,700 foot. Sorry, I almost made a mistake there. And then our decision height in MSL is then 600 feet. All right, we've got an RVR of 1,000 meters. Now, the weather is actually quite nice here at Porto. Um, we've got cloud cover at 3,000 foot and nothing below that. I just did a circuit in the Cessna. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we can have a bit of cloud, but it's, it's not going to affect our decision altitude. All right, so again, uh, once we are at cruise altitude, we're going to set the MCP. Our descent will go down to 1,700 feet. Decision height is going to be 600 feet. Uh, we will tune everything, and I'll show you how we do that as we get there. Right, so coming to the Zebo, guys, and please feel free to to uh, throw your questions. Good morning, Kevin. Put your questions and stuff there. I'll get to you. Um, even though I'm busy, I'll do my best. And Uncle John will always tell me if there is a question waiting. So please feel free to to put your questions as I talk. Uh, let's quickly see. We have the Q&H 1019. Okay, so let's talk the Zebo. I literally changed from the Cessna 172 into the Zebo as per my own instructions and the team instructions previously so we are pretty sure everything's going to work as is the only difference now is instead of starting cold and dark i basically started uh, with engines running um, and this is the situation that you find it in right now and where we're going to take it further so barometer set up correctly uh, in terms of the loading what i did was also i took the realism setting off um, I just put it onto short for the refuel time because I don't want to wait for a truck and then sit here and wait while we're doing training. Um, it's not important. So what I like to do when I do the circuits is I like to put some weight in there. Um, what we can then do is just drop the fuel a little bit. 6.5 is more than enough. So that takes care of our weights. We don't have to, but I'm just going to make the ambiance a bit better so get that in place right so if we look at the wind situation we currently have three four one at four knots that's perfect so that's winds calm and now we can start doing our FMC. Good morning, Tim. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Alba Pino, good morning. Ha ha ha, enjoy the cheese and wine. Right, guys, so what I did was I exported my flight plan uh, just to also make it easier for, for the training. LPP, uh, uh, that's not right, LPPR. 
or and we're gonna activate it all right so we're just going to check we've got the correct sit we've got the correct runway and this is where the fun begins all right so on this runway we have two approaches and we're going to fly both of them uh, VDM 35 that's our VOR DME and then obviously the RNAV we said we're going to do the VDM 35 okay now this my friends is where I totally embarrassed myself and where Zebo picked up on my mistake automatically the FMC recognizes that the glide slope must be off now I in my own silly wisdom so used to flying ILS and GLS now I went and I switched it on. The moment I did that, I killed Ian. You cannot have the glide slope on at all. It just doesn't work that way. So I'm bringing the little summary back up for us. If we look at VOR DME, yes, we're going to use the approach button and the glide slope is no. Glide slope must not be on. All right, so this was in fact the most embarrassing thing that happened to me in a, in a long time I just didn't realize and I was sabotaging myself so please please take note glide slope must be off uh, Uncle John yes sir you got that you understand that absolutely got it okay all right, all right. okay that so yeah that was that was the thing that killed me I mean I spent the week flying circuits trying to get this in to work and that that just that one setting killed me so anyway now that's how we learn right so in terms of our legs we're just going to step through them I've done this flight so many times I know there isn't an issue but you guys can see it's like a big oval thing we're flying there and then you go back back to base the one thing that I want to point out to you just zoom in closer is at Ablek you can see the restriction is 11,000 and this is the reason we climb up to 11,000 the aircraft's quite capable of getting there very fast so uh, we're going to then just go there I'm not going to bother with all the fancy settings and everything because we're only doing circuits guys so please uh, don't let that bother you I'm not gonna go into a major thing when we do a proper flight we'll go and set the rest of the stuff up properly what I'm doing anyway is the bare, bare basics and minimums that you have to do so I'm happy with that all right so um, let's quickly do these little setups care of that three that's that that is correct glide slope must be on off so if we go back to our arrival glide slope is off Al Babino. the moment you try and fly a Ian approach which is a non-precision approach um, based on El Nav, e -Nav uh, if you put the glide slope on Ian just doesn't work it will not kick in it just doesn't work so we are happy with that uh, let's get back there right flaps are set almost forgot I was still in my Cessna configuration just had to fix that quickly yeah I think I've got everything covered the only thing I just didn't do was the pressurization system Alright, now the funny thing, guys, I just want to point out something to you, um, and this is obviously a Navigraph uh, 
issue is depending on the actual approach that we do you will see that the course uh, values actually differ so the impression that I'm getting is Navigraph never uh, synchronized the data 100% across each approach and across each platform um, which is kind of interesting for me one would have thought they they're reading from the same database you know just using some SQL server or some sorting method to put everything in place but uh, apparently they did not so you'll you'll see that for some we're going to fly uh, 350 and some 351 and according to the actual chart that I have in front of me it's supposed to be 352 so you know things happen it seems um, even with the best of us one question I'll say we go if you um, can Alba Pina okay let me show you so if you click on your engines this is obviously in startup it's going to look like this all right once we finish the startup we're going to press that button put the details in there and then we've got the system button this is where we do our actual controller uh, test to see that the um, flight controls are working and then the other one that is to clear it's a clear button if you get your errors I'm actually not sure I haven't tested this but if you get errors it's supposed to be on this display and to clear the errors you can press that button this is the way I understand it's going to work uh, I'm just not sure if Zebo's gotten around to actually implement the display of the errors on this display yet. Um, I haven't even asked him. So I, I, I know that reasonably well it's going to be something like that. Alright, are you guys ready? Shall we give this a try? By the way... Oh yeah. Fantastic. Paul, I'm just going to pull George in here as well. Um, guys, just as a matter of interest, you can see I've dialed in the VOR into the MMR. Um, it is it is displaying. You can see there it is showing us that it's there. Um, we really do not need it. Even though this is a VOR DME approach, it's a cosmetic, nice to have visual cue thing. Um, it's going to make no influence, have no influence on the actual flight. Um, one more thing I want to show you guys, which Twixter actually told me about. Let's quickly go there. If you want to make sure that the actual flight route is Ian capable, what you need to look out for is this inscription. You will see there that you've got a glide path of three degrees in your legs list, eventually somewhere down the line in your legs list that is one of the proper ways of just confirming in your mind quickly that this is an Ian capable approach so you might want to make a note of that too for the rest let's go let's try this never mind try it's gonna work we know it's gonna work yeah yeah morning Uncle John good to hear that you're positive today thank you sir Approaching three five Guys, please excuse the dogs. It's Our Saturday runway. morning. Three, Things five. happen. The Rottweiler. Yeah. You must see that Rottweiler. Uh, John, you'll get a fright, my <laughs> Scares the hell out of me. <laughs> right, by the way, guys, I've got the runway follow terrain contours on. Um, I thought it would be a nice addition just for this flight. and RTO off. Alright, okay, so the aircraft's on autopilot now and we can sit back and relax. Um, time for questions, guys. If you want to ask stuff, please feel free. It doesn't necessarily have to be about this um, approach. You, you know, it will be nice, but if you've got questions, ask them. Fire away, boys. No, I came in late, guys, so I'll uh, have to just catch up um, when the video is ready. Sure. George, basically all we're doing is flying, we're going to fly two circuits, 
um, we're going to do the VOR DME approach using Ian and then we're going to do an RNAV approach using Ian all right we have the option to use EGNOS as well to make it an LPV approach but I um, will probably not do that this morning because I've already done an EGNOS video on on the topic so um, then what we'll do is me and Christian said we want to fly on Watson just come you know do a flight from Porto down to Lisbon and guys any one of you that want to join us uh, you are more than welcome we will be doing it on Watson so if you can can join us that'll be super you know, let's make a nice flight out of it Sorry? You beat me. Uh, I was just about to say stand. Oh, yeah. Not a single question. That's, that's a surprise. Well, I'm trying to decide whether to chuck a very large question in. Go for it! I'm also trying to decide whether it's a stupid question, so give me a minute. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's stupid. It might not be stupid to somebody else. It matters to me, John. <laughs> Listen, I'll forgive you. Morning, George. Which one, me or another one? George Camp. Oh, okay. Morning, George. Okay. My question is, um, with there being quite a That's fair number of different approaches available, or available as such but um, in theory possible is there a hierarchy of which approach you would choose above another when there's an option given that some airfields are equipped for some but not others but that varies from airfield to airfield if that is a sensible question um, can you just give me 10 seconds I'll be with you now There is an important stream that needs to happen. The kids just don't want to play together with us. You know, they got their own story. Okay, yes, there is. Let me explain to you. I'm going to drag the charts on to the screen. Hey, Yogesh. I would think in my mind, this is my opinion, that your decision altitude is going to be the deciding factor, Paul. If you look... Uh, let's get the VOR approach that we're doing on the screen there. If you look at the decision height, where you need to decide whether you're going to go around or not. When you do a VOR DME approach on this airfield with this, uh, this uh, runway, it's 600 feet MSL. Alright, so at 600 feet, you got to decide, are you going to land or not? Go around. Okay. If you're looking at the LNAV, VNAV, that's Ian capable, your decision altitude, depending on your class of your aircraft, is now all of a sudden 60 or 70 feet lower. So if you've got like a misty, uh, cloudy day, you know, a bit of overcast problems, then obviously the LNAV, VNAV with Ian is going to be a better option because you can go lower before you need to decide. The same then goes for EGNOS. If you want to fly the LPV approach, look, it's even lower. I mean, there you're scoring uh, another 60 feet of altitude that you can actually go down lower. The same goes for your runway visual minimum. I mean, it, it goes lower with the kind of approach that you do. So depending on what is available at the airfield, and this one is equipped with EGNOS, 
all right so if you want to do the lpv approach if you've got a, a crappy day then obviously that will be the decision that you make you want to go as low as you can before you need to decide to bug out does that make sense that is an excellent answer thank you very much my pleasure see paul it was not a stupid question no nah. There's, there's no such thing as a stupid question. It sounds like a cliche when people say that there's only stupid people that don't ask questions, you know, not to offend anybody. The thing is, we're here to learn. Um, I'm quite capable of embarrassing myself completely in front of the whole world on a live stream. I've done it quite a few times. But that's how we learn. And I, I bet 10 people on the stream already learned something just from that question. So guys, you must really not be shy. Um, just jump in, ask, say, do. Believe me, Nico is always worried about making an idiot of himself. I am. But he doesn't. I am. He doesn't. Nico, question. When when one is selecting uh, your your flight and you you're selecting your approach how do you go along and say listen i'm going to select ILS or RNAV um, and in that situation and whether you're going to select a an x y or z uh, um, approach uh, uh, chart it, it usually comes down to your landing weight your landing weight is going to determine are you class c or are you class d all right the 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 aircraft when you land uh, between 135 and 140 is a class c when you land above 140 to 150 which we're going to do we class d all right and then usually what you will see is the the larger the aircraft that will also determine if you're going to use x y or z because uh, the turning circles are going to be smaller um, x and y are usually small and medium and z are usually for the larger aircraft kind of everything uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same at all the airports but from my experience that's about what it looks like you know uh, it depends on what aircraft you're flying your weight and your turning circle and things like that which you're going to decide that's something you're going to learn as a real pilot you know i d i don't have the option to really explain that in so much detail atc is an advisor you're the pilot you know the aircraft yeah um like other george asked now would the atc not tell you which approach to fly yes the other atc will tell you what approach to fly but you can always override them by asking for another approach you know you can tell them listen i would prefer to have this and that all right so guys uh, this is a short flight i need to quickly just do the descent planning and stuff i'm going to go for auto break three according to our chart there uh, we had to go down to 1700 i'm going to bring it up on this the screen just to remind you guys again so at the Maltese cross there, we need to be at 1,700 feet to get to our three degree uh, glide slope for Ian. So that is done uh, before I take it off the screen. We also said that our decision altitude is going to be 600. And this is a barom barometric measurement. This is not a radio measurement. DA is for barometer. So um, we are then going to do this. Show that on the chart for me, Nico. I did. Have a look, it's coming. Right, so there's the 600. I've already dialed in my Q and H for the field, and then we're going to do flaps 30 landing, and we are going to put that into its position and then going to uh, confirm that the glide slope is off. Glide slope must be off otherwise we will not get the EN working. Alright so now we just sit and we wait for better days. By the way yeah um Nick, have you tried the delay on the FMC? No, no, I haven't had time. I've, I've literally been flying these circuits all week. Okay.
uh, one of the guys on Facebook made a, an interesting remark. He said the, that on some of our PCs everything is delayed already. Now you want to delay it even more. I don't see the point. Um, mine is not delayed, but uh, you know I like the way it is. So I don't think I'm going to use that setting either. Yeah, the delay is just the realism. It doesn't mm. work so far. I know. What's a cloud base, Nico? Three thousand. When we flew this yesterday, me and Uncle John on Twitch, um, and I was showing him how it works. Um, yes, it was low. It was like one point in time. I said to him, if this was real world, I wouldn't have been able to land there. It was terrible yesterday at one point in time. I I actually ended up doing an Ignos as well, just to get underneath. Uh, decision uh, altitude uh, of the other approaches almost as bad as that law that one that you did once before where you just sort of like came out of no out, out of nowhere yeah Alright, there you go. There the Ian has actually identified the approach for us already. Or I'm just saying it that way just to, for, for descriptive purposes. Basically, you can see Ian is available. We've got the VOR DME on 35. Uh, the runway course is 350. This is what we discussed earlier. So for me and my OCD, I'm just going to quickly tune everything to 350 to make, make it through. Um, Alright, and... Um, yeah, that's that's what we look out for there. You can already see the diamonds are in place and we are literally going to fly this as if it was an ILS approach. Tell you what, it takes a lot of guesswork and a lot of training and all kinds of stuff that needs to happen behind the scenes. It just takes it away you know? it just makes life so much easier. Yes, George, you have to, um, I have shown it on screen, I will show it to you just now again, um, I know you came in late, so just give me a, a second or three, and then I'll show you the summary. You must, 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 I would highly recommend you low, download that uh, list. Yeah, I'll show you just now. I just want to go past Akulu and activate the approach and then... There we go. So there we go. The approach is activated, and then where is that thing to show you quickly? All right. No, George, don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. 
it's fine um, this is the little configuration tip list that I made if you want a copy please go to my private hangar slash OneDrive go to the Zebo folder there is a special folder uh, called approach configuration tips it's in there in PDF format so you can download it basically it tells you on VOR DME we're going to use the approach button but no glide slope and there you can see the differences um, with ILS and GLS we use the glide slope with all the others we just don't simply use it and then EGNOS and WAS we don't even use the approach buttons at all it's just for the Ian stuff there that we use the approach buttons Alright, the one thing that you guys need to look out for is uh, obviously the indicated speed on the MCP so you're going to have to do what you have to do as the pilot to actually fly this thing uh, properly. Alright, so if it kicks you out you need to manage your speed. Dim, Egnos, yes sir. The Egnos approach is basically it's an LPV approach. Um, I don't have the actual explanation for the acronym in front of me but basically it's a high precision uh, version of a non-precision approach basically what happens is on on your approach chart uh, you get an EGNOS code over there at the top you have to input that code into your uh, MMR into the aircraft and that will give you this approach so it's a it's a much more uh, proper secure high precision approach than you would get from um, your system than you would get just from LNAV, ENAV and IAN Right, and then guys uh, just to recap again um, I said in the beginning your VOR just because it's there it, it doesn't have to be there we can actually take the VOR out of play there we've switched it off over here it's got no influence um, if you want to have it there and have it as a visual reference uh, you're obviously welcome but when you activate your Ian uh, that becomes irrelevant it's just you know a good uh, visual reference uh, or cosmetic purposes you're welcome, Tim. Right then guys I want to just quickly show you there's a little white line that's appearing here on the side the moment that white line comes up that's the cue to set up your your go around altitude the moment that thing comes into play you don't have to be scared that this aircraft's going to all of a sudden pitch up and go do funny things so that's set now Feet stabilized, Mr. Burch out to set. Approaching three, five. Disconnect autopilot.
guys and just something else um, we've had a lot of queries about the reverse thrusters apparently not working um, they are working most definitely there's two different things that happen uh, during the stop procedure that we just did during the landing it is a thrust vector that comes into play that does pr produce a reverse thrust uh, you know to stop the aircraft but if you are stationary on the runway and you decide you want to use the reverses as a reverse gear like in your car and to actually roll backwards with it it doesn't produce a thrust vector anymore um, it's just air bypass so um, that is what Zebo told me so just in uh, as a matter of interest if you guys were wondering because it's funny we've had a lot of guys ask what's happened to reverses aren't working they are working when they're supposed to um, that's the short answer I think that's a byproduct of uh, people rather than use the pushback. Yeah, yeah. They can't be bothered to do that, so they use the reverse thrusters, mm -hmm. and now suddenly it's not doing what it used to do. Yeah, yeah, and now the guys are wondering. So that's the short explanation of it. All right, okay, so um, that takes care of lesson number one. Um, guys, I. I'm not going to take a chance by just simply taxiing back and starting the next flight. Um, it works 50% of the times and usually when I do a stream it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to the Cessna 172 again uh, just to make sure everything gets reset Wait, properly. Paul dropped out of the room. Let me pull him back in. Sorry, Paul. Only noticed you dropped out just now. Yes, I forgot to blow down the microphone every so often. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm busy setting up. The next approach we're going to do is going to, going to be the RNAV one. Um, exactly the same principle and the reason I'm doing the two together is so that you have got the reference between the two and that you can see they actually do exactly the same thing um, proving the power of Ian you know the Ian technology and approach uh, philosophy so I hope you guys are enjoying it a bit learning something it also implies confidence that it does work yes I have a quick question. Yeah. You turn the VR off the switch. Is that necessary? No, no, it's personal choice. Um, the reason I do it is to show you that it has zero influence on the approach. It does not interfere. It does not produce any value. There's no reason to have it on or off. It's absolutely. It's a. It's. You can consider it a visual cue. Um, or a cosmetic feature or whatever um, a lot of guys especially the old school guys who, who were trained to fly VOR DME approaches will die before they switch it off most of the, the new young guys coming in they don't even bother to switch the VOR switch on because they've all been trained to use Ian so they couldn't care less you know so it's, it's a personal thing okay, just remember thanks. that it's the FMC that is yeah. controlling the approach. Yes, the FMC is in control. So it's basically it's a GPS on kind of three, approach. Five, it's, there's, way, there's nothing three, coming five. from the ground telling this aircraft what to do. For me, this is groundbreaking. Yeah, for me too. I tell you what, like I said in the beginning of the video, I never bothered with this. It's just, I mean, pff, if I didn't have an ILS, I would land, um, you know, visually or something. Um, yeah, that's what I've tended to do. And we can all get that wrong. Yeah, um, right, so let's just quickly set this up again. Oh, 
One of Uncle John's favorite airports in the whole world is Alicante. And Alicante on the one runway, I think it's 28, uh, Uncle John. It's got this VOR DME approach. You know. Oh, no, that's a lifesaver now. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, now you've got this whole new world. Well, I can do a proper approach there. I'm not frightened of 28 anymore. Yeah. On runway three five. On runway three five. Okay, three knots of winds this time. Waiting for flaps. Okay, let's go do this FMC then. Right, so we're going to do the same departure of runway 35, but now instead of taking VDME, the VOR DME, we're going to take RNAV. Again, glide slope is off, and we're going to use Akulu as our approach transition point. Right, legs will be exactly the same, but we can just double check. Yeah, I'm jumping the gun, eh? Sorry. Need to do the rest still. So. On runway it. three five. On runway three five. Are you guys ready? Yep. Let him roll. Ooh, pressurization system. Good. I hope you're not looking for sympathy, George. You're a very hard man, John. Very hard. John, same man. I'm cracking up here. <laughs> oh, 
Right, so while this is climbing, I'm just going to go to standard anyway. Um, let's have a look at this chart now. So this is now the RNAV approach. Um, approach course according to this chart is 352. We'll see what the actual uh, Navigraph data in the FMC tells us later. We now have a mandatory 3000 feet interception point uh, for the glide slope. Um, and then we've got 480 as a decision height. Right, so let's go look down at the bottom there. There's our Maltese cross thing and we've got 3000. So instead of tuning the MCP down to 17, we're just going to go to 3000. It's uh, measured over a longer distance, so to keep the 3 degree uh, descent, it's fine. Um, Alright, our um, uh, crossover height at the threshold is 50 feet. We need to look out for that one. Right then, um, right, so our decision height we're going to use 540 because we're a bit heavier than the sea. And, um, good morning, Bob. Uh, so, that's about what we need now. We've, we know we've got the correct run, runway visual. Uh, we don't worry about circle to land and the MDA there. Mm, what else do we need to know? Also, the um, going around, uh, we have to climb to flight level 6 zero, So That's cool. Right, so we're going to go for that one and we're going to use Ian. That's the go. Thank you. I can't believe the silence. Yeah, I see Nico muted his mic.
Sojourn. Mr. Zico's done a good job. Mm -hmm. Explained everything clearly to everybody. There's no questions whatsoever coming. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry, the, my wife just came and gave me a peanut butter sandwich, and we were just chatting, so that's why I muted the mic. I'm going to have to have words with her. Mm -hmm. Got to share with everybody, man. Come on, guys. No, come on, Bob. If you've got a question, ask. Yes, please. I don't mind. Not while Nico's mouth is full of peanut butter uh, sandwich. <laughs> That's a very subjective subject. Um, if Zebo moves to MS2020, I'll move. How's that for a, sh a short answer? I'm not excited yet. Um, I think the amount of money that's going to be required to buy into it is going to be absurd compared to the amount of money uh, that you need to keep X-Plane going. Um, we'll see. Um, nothing concrete has been given to us. The display computers that uh, the other streamers used were all high-end, top-of-the-range kind of systems that's going to cost you three, four thousand dollars a shot. Um, I don't know how many guys on the stream has got four thousand dollars lying around that can just go and buy a new machine just to fly a simulator again. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have it. Um, so if that's going to be one of the requirements, I'm out. Um, I'll have to go save Me up. Too. Me too. We'll have to see. You know, Microsoft is very good with their marketing engine, but they're also very good in stabbing good people in the back with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, they've done it twice already. Um, just when we all got excited, they dropped us and ran away. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm literally hanging in the air. I know some of my buddies are very excited. Um, some of the developers are very excited that I know. But for me, uh, I'm not. I'm sitting on the fence on this one still. After looking at the um, the scenery. Uh, at Sort of like plays a big, uh, big part because it looks like you've got to fly online to get that seat. Apparently, there is going to be an offline mode, but you know the kind of data. I've got a six terabyte hard drive that runs my auto right now. Can you imagine having to download six terabyte before every flight? Uh -uh. Don't lose sight of the fact that X plane is about to be upgraded massively with the new engine. Are oh, they going to use leap engines in them? Look, I, I mean, I've got to say that the, what I did yes, see of the different people see was what the different people showed look great but um, as I say that's uh, our candy as far as I'm the power the power of advertising you've only got to think of McDonald's and Burger King you know the amount of money that's spent and uh, Microsoft don't do clearly the, exactly the same thing apparently the developers are French organization Of course, George. Anyway, Bob, far away with yours, Abitab and pushback question. Uh, Bob, in my opinion, the only reason that it will not work is if you have an additional folder. Just check your folder structure. Um, if you have an additional folder between the plugin and explain, it's not going to read it. Oh, my namesake. Right, let me show you quickly. If we go to, oops, sorry, not output. Where is this thing? Resources, uh, resources, plugins. Um, there's Avitab. So from Avitab, there must not be an additional folder. So it's plugin Avitab and then the contents. 
and better push back same thing so you've got better push back in the plugins folder and then it's got the contents what a lot of guys do is they extract the file um, with the folder intact so basically what happens is they they get the better pushback then another better pushback and then inside of that one they get their data explain can't read that and and that's in my experience basically what the guys do wrong so i hope it's similar to what you have there check it out bob <laughs> Well, John is uh, British. Uh, how do you say it? British? You know, they don't pronounce their words properly anymore. They've lost the Queen's English somewhere, but British. Uh, I'm South African, and then George Carney is South African. Paul, what are you, Paul? Irish or Scottish? Me? Don't even yeah. ask that question. Or are you, just, are you just one of these ordinary guys? Uh, I'm a Yorkshireman. Okay. All right. And Christian. True, true. And Christian is an Aussie that's also here with us, so British, yeah, British. 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 I, some of these guys and their pronunciation. I was listening to a video clip during the week. I swear, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't have thought that was English, that that woman was talking. It was just, I don't know where she comes from. Are we all set up for the approach? Uh, yes. Right, so we have got 3,000 dialed into the MCP. According to the chart, it needs to be 352. We'll see when Ian kicks in later what it tells us what the course settings should be according to the FMC. Uh, in actual fact, we can read it there. It's actually telling us, I forgot, uh, 351. So according to Navigraph's own data, it doesn't you know, actually conquer. But anyway, um, small difference there. All right. And then we're ready. We're going to do flaps to the landing again. Here we go. The, the Ian telling us it's ready for us. I hope all you guys are as uh, impressed as I am. Okay, that's just showed up on the display, so yeah. that's excellent. That's a clue that it's kicked in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and then you can also see you've got the diamonds, just like the ILS, you know. Sure. Now, let me show you. If I go to glide slope on, look, it's gone. The moment you switch glide slope on, you are back to LNAV, ENAV, and there's no Ian. And this is what Zebo saw I did, and he's, he asked me, why do I do that? <laughs> and then I knew, oops, that's wrong. <laughs> cool. Alright, so that, that was the big trick. There you go, it's on. And um, also, um, when you are in the LNAV VNAV configuration, you cannot use the approach button. And you have to dial your altitude down to minimums, otherwise the MCP will stop you at 3000. The moment Ian comes on, it literally works like an ILS. If you switch the approach on, it will break through the altitude and actually do the proper approach. Whatever you do, make sure that you get a copy of that text file. That's your reference. Yeah, I'm going to have to get to the beginning once it's rendered to get a full understanding mm. of the end of it. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, a number of them that's going to have to do that. But that, that, that's why Nico's creating this uh, vid. Yeah. Which I have to say is very helpful and very useful because I've never ever seen anybody demonstrate or even talk about Ian and any other. I think that I think that is for the vast majority of us. This is all new to me. Yeah, I knew about it, but I didn't care for it, you know. And then in the week, like I said, Santos, you know, he just got the ball rolling there, and my mind started working about this. Trust me, Nico spent hours and hours and hours in this past week 
trying to get all this clarified and sorted. So you're extremely fortunate, guys, of the work that, that's been done in the background that you're not even aware of. He's, he's worked tremendously hard to get all this information for you. Here, here. Yeah, and Zebo and Twixter and Item. Zebo big time. Yeah. Zebo big time. Yeah. Alright, so I've just initialized the approach course there, uh, the approach button. There you go. Perfect. What a sight. Look at this approach. Look at the water and everything. Wow. I think we're fortunate that um, Nico and Zebo have such a good um, connection. Um, he, he's been an absolute lifesaver. Oh, and Twixter. Don't forget Twixter. And Twixter, of course. Uh -huh. Um, George, um, I've mentioned it a few times, this runway, according to the chart, let me show you quickly, according to the actual chart, this is from Navigraph, there is 352, alright, you'll see it on all the charts, but the VOR DME, I think, was running off uh, 350, I'm speaking under correction, it's either 350 or 351, and the... Um, uh, RNAV is also running 351 so uh, there's a discrepancy between Navigraph's information it's like they haven't synchronized everything properly now how does Navigraph get to know, if you know that this is a, a, a problem well, it's not a major problem somebody will have to post it on their forum then they go and investigate i've done it a few times but i haven't done it lately you know it's not for me it's not a deal breaker i don't care because at the end of the day i'm the pilot in command i have to do what i have to do um you know you'll get you'll get somebody that's going to go complain and then they'll fix it but uh, i mean it, it's it's very clearly a discrepancy in the navigraph data that isn't propagated through all the different platforms And look at that, it's it's absolutely, it looks just like an ordinary ILS. You know, it's just amazing. Um, in the beginning of the video, I make mention of it, but the Ian approach, George Carney, it, it actually consolidates 18, 18, 18 different approaches into one procedure. So in, imagine the amount of money the airlines save instead of having to teach a pilot 18 different approaches they, they only teach him this one procedure and the problem goes away progress that's unbelievable i mean i could start baking a cake and putting all the, all the ingredients in together and getting a perfect cake and then you got it you got it and the display there is Changed a few minutes ago from Delta Vita to FMC. Exactly. Yeah, because this runs off your FMC. This is groundbreaking. Approaching three, five. Yeah, yeah. I'll read 
just now, but uh, I, I think I know what you mean. Wow, okay, I loved it. I loved this stream. This was actually very, very fantastic. I'm gonna do a quick replay when we off the runway, yeah? Thank you, Nico. There's a lot for me to go and uh, sure, sure. process now and uh, and put together. Demand never stops <laughs> evolving with something like. Yeah, I tell you what. Um, even me. John wasn't kidding. I spent hours and hours with the guys um, learning this thing to understand it. It's funny now that I reproduce it and I show it, I go, but you know, it's so easy. I mean, gee, but to get the understanding and the, the knowledge, that's that took forever. Thank you, George Camp. Thank you, Bob and uh, Ray. Thank you. Uh, let's get it right. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you for Agreed. being here. Thank you very much, Nico. It's a big pleasure. Um, Bob, now that we've finished, uh, before we leave the stream, um, me and Christian said we want to go fly, and you guys are also welcome to come join us on Ransom. I'm just not going to stream it right now. Uh, we're going to stream the group flight this evening again. But Christian, uh, being down under, needs um, you know to get a flight in before he goes to bed. So um, ask your question, um, or let me. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. You did ask it that that we answered. You said you're going to go and check afterwards, right? That was Avitab and Peter Push back. Sorry, yeah. Now I remember. I remember. Okay. Let's do one more Can replay. Can we see one more replay, please, from the extra? Yeah. Pleasure, Yorkie. Can I just wind the clock back to something you said earlier, Nico? Yeah, 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 um, please. The big advantage of these EN approaches is that it reduces the minimums that you have to apply for you to be able to get into the airport at all. Mm -hmm. And that is largely dependent on the class of the plane, either C or D, and that itself is weight dependent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what's the, um, the threshold between class C and D? So that if, if, we're, if we're flying into somewhere, we check the 80s, we check the ceiling, and you know we need to decide whether we can get in there at all, don't we? So, um, what's what's the what what's the, what's the weight? Um, um, I know thing? I know we can go and Google it, but I've got it in the back of my mind. Between one thirty and one forty is class C, one forty to one fifty is class D, and everything above one um, one fifty is then the other one. But hang on, you know what? Uh, before I I talk nonsense, let's quickly Google it. Let's see what we can come up with uh, okay, I think I've got something That's uh, not entirely what you're looking for. Uh, these guys here on Google are getting too technical now. Again, okay, I just want to list. Uh, uh I don't want to download something. I just pictured myself checking the charts, checking the ATIS and wondering whether, you know, uh, in would get me down when some other approach wouldn't. Yeah. 
Um, I'm looking for a summary, but I don't see a summary. I mean, the stuff that I'm reading here on YouTube now, it's like a whole thesis for a doctorate, you know, it's like, ah. <laughs> too much to plow through yeah it's just too much um because it's not just about the category it's also about the levels they've got categories and levels and then they've got formulas to work it out why the hell they don't just give us a, a little spreadsheet and say this is that and that's that i don't know i mean who wants to do the math i don't want to do the math let's quickly have a look see there's one or two more i just want to have a quick look at Oh my hat, I've just had a look on Google. It's outrageous. Yeah. You scared yourself to death. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Crazy the amount of information the guys I'm here at the CFI notebook, and I mean, you must check this stuff. Aircraft ratings. Um. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know where it, it's actually mentioned? It's Simbrief. I think that's where I saw it. Let's quickly go to Simbrief. I'll put it on thanks, screen, yeah? Janex. I'll put it on screen, yeah? Janex, thank you very much. Uh, let's quickly go to login. I have to go to saved airframes. Let's go to the Zebo. Edit. Here we go. Here we go. Now everyone knows what Ian is. Right. So if you look at the performance codes there, it tells us class A, a VREF is lower than 91 knots. B is 91 to 120, C is 121 to 140, D is 141 to 165, uh, and E is 166 to 210. That's the scale. So when we did the Faro fly in the other day, you cannot land a Class D aircraft there. You have to bring your landing speed below 140 knots. And that's why we only took on 80 passengers, because otherwise the Zebo is just too heavy. It, it can't stop on that runway, because the runway is too short. So there you go. That's a nice scale to refer to. Cool. And so when we do the descent planning, the VREF pops up on the FMC. Yes. And then... Can we use that to yes. decide whether we yes. cat C or D? Yes. Fabulous. Yes. Another happy customer. Yeah, good stuff. Could you just slide that screen back on, Nico, so I can... I just closed it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, shit, sorry, man. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> Pardon my... There you go, there. there you go. Take a screenshot. But you should have a some brief account. Just go check it. It's in the airframes. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, sorry. No worries. No, I don't mind showing you. You're done. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, gentlemen, that takes care of the stream for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thoroughly did. It was nice having you here. And thanks for all the thanks as well. Um, I am going to do this flight with Christian now, so if you guys want to join us, you're welcome, but it's not going to be on stream, it's just going to be us privately flying together. If you guys want to join us on Discord, also you're welcome, you don't have to be part of the clan to join, you can just pop in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys soon again. But trip, thank you, bye-bye, handicap, bye-bye. Thanks. Bye Nico. all. Bye-bye everyone. Thank you very much, Nico. Thank you very much, Uncle Joe.